First at four, should a teenager who killed his father get life without the possibility of parole? His mom, who lost her husband, makes an emotional plea. I'm asking you to give us some hope back to our family. More from her and the judge's decision. And here's Kim. Well, finally, we get some sunshine and temperatures much warmer today in the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees. But rain is on the way. I'll time it out hour by hour in the forecast. Hi, everyone. OK, so this is what you call a slow burn. We are scorching the earth in Oakland Township. They're actually setting fires on purpose. I'll explain why this is actually a good thing. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4, First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, a heartbreaking battle in court for a Brighton family as a teenager is sentenced for shooting his father to death. Hayden Yagis murdered his dad the day after Father's Day as he slept. His son pleaded guilty to a few charges, including first degree murder. At issue today, should the teen be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole? Prosecutors push for that punishment, but the teen's mother, who lost her husband, told the court that's not what her family wants. He is remorseful and saddened by what he has done. My husband loved his son deeply. He only wanted the best for him in life. <sighs> I know he has forgiven him. And anyone who knew my husband knows that he would not want to see his boy in prison for the rest of his life. He is so young. I believe with time and proper treatment, he can absolutely be rehabilitated and reintegrated into society. Statutorily speaking, the taking of a human life is the most serious offense one can commit in the state of Michigan. Morally speaking, it is the vilest offense one can commit in the world. Statutorily speaking, this court is obligated to sentence the defendant to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The judge ultimately sided with the family, saying the teen's brain was not fully developed at the time of the shooting, which meant he, quote, could not fully appreciate the consequences of his decision. The judge gave him 40 to 60 years with a chance for parole. Tonight at 6, we're getting our first reaction to the sentence from people who knew the victim. We're also getting some new information today about the deadly shooting spree on the campus of Michigan State University. It sheds light on the suspect's drug use, state of mind, and the number of bullets fired. But there still is one big question remaining right now. Kimberly Gill joins us now to run through some of these key points. Kim. Yeah. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to you. It's important to note this is not the final report on the shooting, but it's the best information police have right now. You'll probably remember three students were killed, five injured back on February 13th of this year. Test results show at the time of the shooting, the 43-year-old gunman had a point 4-0 blood alcohol content and also tested positive for THC, which is a byproduct of marijuana. He purchased the two guns he was carrying legally, but they were not registered. He left a trail of 18 bullet casings from Berkey Hall to the Student Union and outside the Human Ecology Building. So far, investigators say they cannot find a conclusive motive for the shootings. They do say a letter left by the gunman shows he felt disconnected from the world and disrespected with a lot of anger about those feelings. You'll probably remember the gunman shot himself when police caught up with him about five miles from campus. You'll notice uh, we're not mentioning the shooter's name. It's all part of our editorial policy to focus more on the victims and less on the perpetrators of these mass shootings. So tonight at five, we'll have more from this new report, including a map of the shooter's movements between leaving campus and when he shot himself. But for now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Kim. We'll see you at five. Mm -hmm. Well, a Pontiac man is behind bars right now, accused of leaving a threatening message for the Detroit Skate Club over in Bloomfield Hills. Police say Benjamin Denning identified himself in that message and threatened to shoot people with an AR-15, including any police that responded. Police also found out the 38 year old had a warrant for a previous incident of inappropriate communication with court personnel at the 48th District Court. He was arrested Tuesday, denied bond in the case involving the skate club. In your first forecast, we're seeing the best weather of the week today, but that's not really saying that much. Let's check in with meteorologist Kim Adams. That's true. The bar was pretty low, it right? Was. Snow at the beginning of the week, three nights with freeze warnings. Tonight, no freeze warnings for us. We've got temperatures this afternoon anywhere from the mid 50s in Mount Clemens all the way into the 60s in Lansing. Jackson Howell is at 61, 61 in Flint, hanging on to the mid 50s at Metro Airport, 58 right now in Pontiac. So it is warmer than it was at the same 
same time yesterday by about 11 degrees in Pontiac and uh, 5 degrees in Pontiac, 11 degrees in Howell. So definitely a warmer day today. Tomorrow we go back into the upper 50s, but unfortunately it looks like rain is going to affect the end of the work week. 47 in the morning, so no frost. We'll get clouds overnight tonight, and that's going to uh, keep our temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. By noon tomorrow, we're in the mid to upper 50s on our way to a high of 58. We'll take a look at the weekend forecast. There's still a chance for rain even on the weekend. We'll talk about that in the forecast coming up. One of the most controversial talk show hosts in the history of daytime television has died. Jerry Springer was both a ratings powerhouse and a cultural pariah. Springer was first a news anchor and the mayor of Cincinnati before he started fronting the Jerry Springer show for 27 years. His show was known for wild confrontations, chair throwing and profanity laced drama. It ended back in 2018. Today Springer died after a brief battle with pancreatic cancer. He was 79 years old. Prosecutors in the Pentagon leak case are fighting really hard to keep the suspect behind bars. They say 21-year-old Jack Tashira kept an arsenal of guns and said on social media that he would like to kill a ton of people. A Massachusetts Air National Guardsman is accused of leaking highly classified military documents. A court filing argues he could be a flight risk and a, quote, foreign adversary could try to help him escape the U.S. For now, the judge put a decision on hold. Tashira remains in custody this afternoon. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy rallied Republicans to put more pressure on President Biden, but the battle over the country's debt ceiling is far from over. The Republican-controlled House had just enough votes to pass McCarthy's plan to raise the debt ceiling by $1.5 trillion. But it comes with spending cuts that include canceling the president's student loan relief plan. Democrats say it won't pass the Senate. Meantime, the government could lose the ability to pay its debts by this summer, possibly as early as June. There are more negotiations to come. Well, a small part of Oakland County is burning this afternoon as conservancy groups target invasive species and also encourage new growth of native plants. They burn down to build up. Today, they are focusing on a prescribed burn in parts of Oakland Township off Orion and West Snell Roads. The latest burn happened a little bit late today. Paula J Tupman joins us now live to show us how it all works. Paula. Yeah, hi. Hi, everybody. Okay, so if you saw this on the side of the road, rightfully so, you, sh you should be concerned. But as you said, this is a prescribed burn, and it's a slow burn. They want it to go slowly. There's a science to this, but they want it to go slowly because it gets deeper into the ground. It kills those invasive species, but it also warms the earth so beneficial plants can actually grow a lot faster. With very careful preparation, Dr. Ben Vanderweide, the area stewardship manager for Oakland Township, and Chris Bunch of the Six Rivers Land Conservancy in Rochester have joined teams to literally scorch the earth. The purpose to gift the land with an explosion of rebirth and regeneration. And these prairie plants, they keep their growing points below ground, so the fire will pass through and then they can just re-sprout quickly from those growing points. It is just fabulous for all of the plants that uh, thrive on the nutrients that are unlocked when we do the burn like this in the spring. From the human side view of the Paint Creek Trail in Oakland Township, you may not be able to tell, but we can see it with the eagle eye of Drone 4. This used to be a well-used, well-worn railroad throughway. And way back when, when those squealing wheels upon the rails used to throw sparks. When the trains came through here, they would spark fires. And some of the uh, township residents that have been here for a while actually tell me they used to come out here. Um, that someone would ring a bell, they'd all run down to the railroad tracks and help put out fires. Whether they come in on the wings of birds, the hulls of barges, the bottoms of trucks, or sometimes the unwitting carelessness of human landscaping, invasive species have found their way to our prairie and woodlands. Here just off the Paint Creek Trail, woody buckthorn and invasive willow choke out native species. But what modern humans realize from the days of those accidental fires is that fire started properly and carefully is the great eliminator and regenerator. So, so you're gonna wipe those out, but by the time they regenerate, it's actually easier for you to spot them and kill them. Yep, so they're lower to the ground. Um, you can treat them without affecting the plants around them quite as much. And the good stuff, yeah. Beneficial natives, flowers, and other plants, they come back with a vengeance. So if you come back in a month, uh, your mind is gonna be blown. You're gonna see black uh, today when the burn is done, and you come back in a month and things will be coming back 10 times faster than they did prior to the burn. Yeah, 
you know, please tell me I don't have to say this and mean it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Don't try this at home. There's a science to this. This this uh, fire ecology is an actual science because you can even see right here. They can actually get within inches of a structure and keep it from catching on fire. They wait for the conditions to be right. They've been doing these burns throughout the spring. They've got some other invasive species that they're actually going to be going after later this summer. But again, they tell me in a month or so, come back. We won't recognize this area, this scorched earth. We're going to come back because we want to see for ourselves. Karen. Interesting behind the scenes look. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paula.